and I'm starting out by making the polenta. And polenta is nothing more than cornmeal, and so I'm cooking one cup of coarsely ground cornmeal, which you can find in your grocery store or in a gourmet cook store, in three cups of cold water until it's thick. And this is ready. So once you have cornmeal cooked, then what you need to do is to pour it out onto a greased board, either a marble board or if you have a wood board, that'll work well too. So get it all out. It should be nice and thick. And then just spread it, not till it's too thin, but just so it's nice and even looking. And then you want to set this aside and allow this to cool. We need to go to the beef part of this. This is beef shin. And this is how you get it in the grocery store. It's a very tough piece of meat and it's great for cooking in a long simmered soup. And if you couldn't find this, well then you could use something else like short ribs or beef neck bones. And in here I have browned two of them, two beef shin bones in about one tablespoon of olive oil. You really want to get that nicely browned. And then it's a matter of putting in your favorite vegetables. And here are some of mine. So we want to start out with some carrots. So a couple carrots can go in, and this can be just in chunks. So there's our carrot. A nice onion can go in. Just quarter it. This is nothing fancy. This is just a very hearty peasant soup. And it's really not a traditional Italian soup, but it does use good ingredients in the Italian style. For instance, the polenta is northern Italian. So when we put the polenta in, I always think of it as a, a Marianne version of Zuppa alla Marianna. So it is somewhat Italian. And then I take a piece of cheesecloth like this, and you can buy this in the grocery store. This is really good for a lot of cooking. And I add some cloves, but add as many cloves as you want. And I also like to add bay leaf, and I put the bay leaf and the cloves together, and then I just make a little present, un piccolo regalo, and I tie it up with cooking string. And this goes in the pot, and it keeps everything in a little bag so that you don't have to go fishing it out later on. So there is our piccolo regalo, and then we want to add some salt and some pepper, some coarse ground pepper, or you could use peppercorns for this as well. Here's a little bit of oregano, and then we want tomatoes. And all we want to do is cut them up. Nothing fancy because this is all going to cook down. So about a pound and a half, two pounds of tomatoes go into the pot. And when you make this soup, you want to make sure that you start the day before. I mean, you can have it on the day that you make it. But I like to skim the soup of all the excess fat that's going to accumulate. And I do that by making the soup ahead of time and then putting it in the refrigerator and the next day skimming the top, removing all of the fat, and then I have a really nice, clear tasting soup. So this is a beautiful bunch of fresh basil. Don't use dried basil for this. It would be just too medicinal. That goes in. And if you wanted to use some fresh oregano, here's some fresh oregano that I got out of the garden. And that can go in just like that. And as the soup cooks, you want to really let it cook on a simmer, you will have to go back and check to see that it has enough water. You want to start with cold water. Cold water is going to re release the flavor of the vegetables and the meat very slowly. If you start in hot water, you bring all the starches of the meat to the surface and it creates a seal or a gel. And then the flavors do not release very easily. So enough water to cover. We need just a little bit more water. And that's all there is to this part of making that soup. And then it cooks for about an hour, an hour and a half. 
And after it's cooked, well, then you can do the next step. So now you want to have a strainer and a bowl. And you go in and you fish out the meat. And it should be so tender now that it's just falling off the bone. And there's the other piece with all those herbs that I cooked and the vegetables. You strain the soup through a colander like this. I'm going to start like this so that I can get a good grip on that pot. So in a bowl with a colander in it, take the soup. And I think now I can just lift that up with my Herculean arms and pour it in very, very slowly. That leaves all those excess solids behind. And you press on that. Press on that because you want all of that flavor. All of that's important. And once you have it all extracted, well, then you just get rid of the excess solids that you have. And once you have it like that, well, then you want to cover it. And you see, you can see that it has a line of grease over the top. And if you cook your soup at a simmer, all the fat will remain on the surface. But if you boil it, it'll all get mixed in with the soup, and then it will be greasy. So before I do that, put that in the refrigerator, let me show you what you do with this meat. Just take it and cut it up into random chunks. You see a little piece of bone there? You just take it out, cut it up into small pieces. So cut this all up, because we're going to let this chill in the refrigerator until the next day as well. And you take all of your vegetables and you cut them up into pieces and add all of that to the bowl as well. Then you just get rid of all this excess fat that was around the meat. There's one other little piece that I'll get for you. So now this can go in the refrigerator until the next day or if you're doing this on the day of, I would put it in the refrigerator at least for a couple hours before you want to serve it so that some of that fat from the soup will come to the top. So here is the meat. Here is the soup. Over here, I have reheated the soup with the vegetables. And I think you can see how wonderful that looks. Remember that polenta? Well, here it is all cooled down. And now, all I do is take a slice of this, a nice thick wedge or piece, and it solidifies up beautifully. And you put that in the base of your soup bowl. This is an entire meal. And look at the clarity of this broth. No fat, nowhere. It's perfect, but if it wasn't, I would add a little extra salt and a little bit of pepper. And today, I'm going to add a nice bunch of fresh basil right over the top, just like that.